Okay, this is a special video that I've been wanting to do for a long time, but didn't have any of the data. This is one of those cases where I've had to actually rely on people and stand on the shoulders of others who have come to find out things. And of course, that's what a researcher really does. He can't spend all of his time down one rabbit hole finding out everything. He has to try to go around and make connections and find out where this rabbit hole comes out and, oh, wow, maybe make the connections there. But if you've been with me for a couple of years here now, you've probably seen or I made a series of videos about cave art and so on and how it connects and that there were certain things that were special about it, whether it was the uh, ancient uh, Renaissance painters who, once they saw it, said, with all this shading and everything going on and showing them in action and all this, we really think that we did everything, but wow, how old is this? And it showed something about it, but then also I've shown other videos where perhaps all these dots that are on this cow's face here around the eyes connect to actually Aldebaran and other stars that actually connect to Taurus. And this makes a connection too. Pleiades over the shoulder actually confirms it more and more. But if you look at the uh, bull on the left-hand side that's white right there, you'll notice that it has some markings in front of his nose and that doesn't make much sense. Also somehow right in the center of this thing shows a female deer and then male deers and I don't know if that's actually that giant Saronos or Irish deer of old and things, but it, it could easily make those connections. But what this man has been able to do, and he is not a PhD, doesn't have a doctor in front of his name or anything. He's a guy on the side, kind of like me, just did research and found a little something and decided to hang around in that rabbit hole a little bit longer. His name is Ben Bacon, and he's actually a furniture conservator, like taking antique serv uh, furniture and fixing it up. And it's one of his little side things he does, like I talk about my side things, and actually you're actually watching constantly things that I find in part of my side things. Let's get into this, though, and not talk about me and how I found one thing or something else, because this is really relying on the backs of others and other stuff that shows the truth of where things came from, how advanced a certain people were, what was going on here, and what all these cave markings actually seem to point to the idea of, more than the fact that they're just art that goes on here. You see all these extra scribblings and sticks and branches of the tree of life looking ideas going on here and certain things that are declamated. And guys figured out that there's this thing that works with the effect of the moon and when it goes through its cycles and that center thing in the bottom right there goes along with that and other people have made other little bits of connections but then what's the idea of this stellar cow that's shown over here at the right and it's two children which are shown all in stars and things like that what connections could there possibly be with these scribbles and lines and stuff. You can even see where right on the rib cage, right in the center of the body here, are three lines, well, it looks like four maybe, that are done across, but that's a horse. But then you also see this bull where it has one, two, three, four, five. It's a little different. Almost looks like a lyre standing up too. And so there are these markings that are attached with them, but then dots that go along with it too, and a series of dots like we see right here that's a attached to this idea, showing you that there's a proto-communication going on here, not necessarily a speech that we know of built on phonetic words in our current way, but surely this shows where they would give examples and point at things and talk about it, and then the way things go through. But what was all this about? What was even any of it about? Well, here's a thing that this guy Ben Bacon kind of figured out off of it, and we're gonna get into this as we do. Uh, reveal it a little more and what maybe these little dots on these noses above their shows and things like that because you know it's kind of a misty time where we try to go back in ancient times and people want to believe a myriad of different things from the times of the ancient Sumerians and Egyptians and Levantine people and all the people that are in cahoots here 
that they didn't know each other, but then we show that they had trade with each other. Oh my God, way back when. There's actually some symbols we'll get into later that shows that at one time, there was this weird kind of connected language too that all these people are using symbols of, and amazingly, they seem to be using them in the same way. And sure, this and the little dot in the lines looks like a sun, but hold on a minute. This is in conjunction with that, and way over here, it's the same thing, and way over here, it's the same thing, and so on too. And who led to this? Because it looks like it leads to Cro-Magnon Man and goes way back farther than we're looking at. Now, maybe now would be a good time to mention the fact that uh, what I'm talking about is something that stretches back 20,000 years and farther. So not only have we looked at a lot of stuff uh, for ancient times and then been able to show different connectives through these couple of years and go back and show a lot of connections back to Gobekli Tepe, which is now shown as a whole archeological complex, the largest of the world, and at a time that doubles the dating of anything that people thought like that was going on. Sure, there's a lot of conjecture about it and everything, but here's a weird one for you. Maybe this is a good place to throw it in. We know that these people at this time and coming out of this time, pre-proto-Sumerian and Egyptian people that were doing this, actually knew mathematics to a huge number. And all this folklore and stuff, and this apparently is before writing, although we've shown some proto writings like Kamyana Mahila that go back 22,000 BC. But if we were to look at it in this guise that they only had ideograms, concepts, and things like that, at this same time, they're apparently doing an incredible math, which leads into the Sumerians having trigonometry where they're even showing declamations of planets and how they go across and exactly timelines and all this archaeoastronomy things that go on. But they're showing you that they had this going on at this time too, and it's fairly precise. And a way of showing you the seasons, when animals actually breed, when they have children as opposed to the seasons and so on, and that they are actually using a solar or sun calendar and a moon calendar, which we've shown, you know, like drifts off in the idea of people in writing and when they had it going on. But the connections that are shown here actually show that that was going on well into the past. Was it all well refined? No, it doesn't look like it's well refined as it is now, of course, in any way. But it shows you knowledges and things that perhaps they were using a a stick and using it to ride on the sand and saying expressions to people, the things that are just never going to be ever found and things. But uh, the idea of putting writing down at one point in its first point, there was from the gods and all this idea. So it was sacred. So it took a while before it turned into a common knowledge type of thing. It was one of those things that was secret and kind of kept that somebody could write down something, no matter what it said. It's just some gibberish lines run on a thing, but then hand it to somebody else. And whatever you were thinking of, whenever you wrote all that whole title, they can have it word for word right there themselves too. It's an amazing concept. Of course, it's hard to look at that and what we have nowadays. Now we can just text people and everything in a modern day, but that actually is derived from these concepts that go back. back. And once upon a time, people wish that somebody could just do something rather than having to walk all the way across and go through the mountain pass and so and so and talk to these one people about the hunt that's coming up or something along that line. It's amazing to see all the advances, but it's also amazing to see connections go back this far. It's really quite revealing. And this is something that um, shows connections from elder times when people were thinking that, you know, they didn't have much knowledge or whatever. And nowadays, a modern conjecture, people have this big spread before, before uh, somehow that they were either ug at this point, and then other people are going, they're much, just way much more advanced. And then, in fact, as we look at it, it seems like we were trying to ruin that situation to try to go along with the Bible to until the last here little bit and people are willing to go, okay, we already surpassed all of that. Everybody's fine with it, science. What does this really show you? And people are starting to get a hold of it. Although there are a lot of people that's still trapped inside religion and everything, and they're somehow able to still go through this idea and say the two connect somehow, but that's not for the scope of this video. 
I've shown you where they built mammoth houses and so on, and even in a video game that I play, how they actually play out this idea and still a primitive type people, and people want to attach this to the Eskimos and things, but that's not the people it is attached to and well into the last ice age, and building giant mammoth huts out of skulls and all the bones that go along with it. But whenever they're down over here where there's a lot more trees and availability, they were building houses and so on that goes along with that. And this teepee idea comes all the way down through the idea and people that ended up being in the Gobekli Tepe complex or at least one place that we look at in that. And I've got a video of that coming up. I don't know for whether it'll come before or after this, but in this same weird idea, we actually have things that have a lineage to them and concepts that, again, we think of as Amerindians in this type of idea, but no, no, this goes way back before and everything. And even some of those symbols we'll look at coming up here shortly actually have more to do with it. And it shows connections that Amerindians had to these same linguistics and so on. And of course, that has to come back from well before they came into the Americas. So all kinds of connections can be made off this, and once we get it deciphered a little better here, we'll know a lot more. One thing that doesn't seem that he's trying to add in the archaeoastronomy and things we have connected with that, but I'll get to that whenever it tries to come into it here. For we're looking at a people that some might say were UG and other people were more advanced, and you look at things that really are their throwaways and so on, and they have certain types of things, but then you look at other parts of their art and all this concept and the shapes, and that's a lion, that's a horse, that's an elephant. And being able to figure out all these things and represent it art in a much more different way. And that in itself, and all these other little things that doesn't seem like in itself are one thing, but once you start to get them laid out like a puzzle on the paper and you know what you're looking for by looking at the front of the box, that's one thing. When you're trying to do it whenever it has no box and there's no straight edges to give you a start, it's a lot more difficult. And this thing we're showing here here is actually a huge piece of the puzzle. It's one of those ones where you didn't know what was going on here, but you found one that looked like parts of an eye and you found another and you put those together and then, oh my gosh, that snaps in right here. and. Oh, you know that thing that I thought might be just dirt, or it could be a dog, or it could be part of this, that, and the other? That's a bull. Yeah, and this is his eye, and so on. And then this right here snaps right there, and then that's Orion, and this right here. And there's the Pleiades, and hold on a second. There's 13, and there's 13 moons, and this, that, and the other. And you start making some connections that these people had back then. And it's incredibly odd. It's peering back through over 20,000 years of time and seeing what these people were thinking at the time. And a lot of it, people look like is conjecture. But when you find these puzzle pieces like this right here, it's more than that. And then you apply it towards the scientific method. And he ended up getting a lot of these people. I'll show you him and a couple other people here that are attached to it shortly, where they got into it and they go, oh my God, and they got other people that they knew were in this exact field, studying this exact concept, trying to figure out what it was. And whenever they showed up, they were like, that's it. This is like a Rosetta Stone situation. My friend, you have it. And then they started getting into it and it enveloped and turned into a flower and they saw the whole thing in front of them so far. And now this is confirmed enough to where it's out there in the open. Everybody's getting to hear about it and so on now. But we've looked at a lot of things where it shows you these ancient burial rites and so on, and that these people were actually wearing pants way before we're allowed to think that people had pants. When did people have boots? When did the people go in covered wagons and head west and do all this, riding on horses and doing it? Hey, that happened a long time before too. Amazingly, we can look back at things that are 30,000 years old and find that they're more advanced than people are in humanity today. That's something that probably shouldn't be delved into too deep, though. Let's try to go with a different concept. These people here that all lived across this swath that was pushed down due to an ice bridge and so on going on there were more south than what they are today. They were all around a Fertile Crescent and an idea and stuff, and there were a lot less people at this time due to the giant catastrophe that happened at the end of the Ice Age at the Younger Dryas. 
We're, we're looking at a modern map and throwing this on top of it, but if we take the water level down where it's in the ice and ice age and so on, this whole North Sea is Doggerland and a lot of things are very different, we're finding out. And they show you some differences in shorelines and how they've grown a little bit here, but this isn't even quite accurate. We see certain maps where they show you where these ancient Yamnai or Aryan type people had gone and spread out. And then later you look at these places where the direction says they go and all these things that happen in each one. And you start to develop a different idea. But this is a primer looking back through so much fog and time, it's almost unreal to try to put it together. And yet whenever you find something like this and it's so pat, it ends up coming about to being like, um, we understand something a lot more than we ever did. It's an extremely important puzzle piece here that goes on with this idea here. And as soon as I figured out about it or whatever, I put it on the table real quick and I've got to get a bunch of pictures together. And again, like starting off the video here, I talked about how we had gone through a long series of cave <coughs> art <coughs> pardon me we've gone through a long series of showing different ones in cave art and then the next year i went through another series too this was kind of like okay you know what this is and if you don't here it kind of is and then the second one showed you a lot of things that were going on and what people said about it and how great that it was and so on but also a third layer showed you like archaeoastronomy in it and orion and aldebron and orion all these things hooked up to it certain animals in certain times of the year and this one we're looking at right here swathed around looking like a bend in the sky actually if you were able to make this wall transparent that's exactly where here comes up orion and after taurus and taurus is here Aldebron's in the right spot versus the Pleiades over his shoulder. Everything seems to be in action, but there are four dots that are here instead of three for Orion. And there's something odd about that, but that's in the place of Orion. So they had something going on about it. Da, 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 da. Now, let's say that those dots that are inconspicuous that are sometimes clustered around the eyes are really stripes or things like that in the middle of a creature are actually meant to signify something different. We're going to get into that here. And then what this man found that again is just a, a furniture worker who's doing this on the side. It shows you don't have to be totally deep into it or especially something like this. In fact, sometimes a fresh view on it gives you a whole new view of the way things really played out in ancient times. So he's an amateur archaeologist. He helps crack the Ice Age cave art code. And so whenever you look at things like this and you see a bull and then there's certain dots next to him and so on, this guy took that idea to another level. He goes, well, let me get as much cave art as I can in pictures and I'll keep looking through them and see if I can see any connections. And he did with bulls having certain numbers and other ones having certain numbers. And then he figured it out and applied it to the idea of when their world are year started out and how many moons and things were and it started to add up to their breeding cycle and when they had kids in order to help out with the hunt and all of these other things but one thing that gets missed in this idea because it's showing this puzzle piece in this way and exactly so it's not showing you that just a minute ago we were looking at something that is actually definitely a symbol of as above so below in fact below the earth here's a picture that if you made everything crystal clear there's where orion would be there's this here's taurus and it showed you something like that too and that there's a connection to archaeoastronomy in this idea and the seasons for whenever they see certain constellations at time with this too so they have a constellation they already have in a bull and there's a sheep over here and so on too but that actually coordinates with this idea too in like a 3D layer situation. So it gets a little complex, but once they found this and the flower opened up and they were like, oh wow, and they started applying all these things to each other, they found out it happened over and over and over again. And this man that's just shown there is this Ben Bacon. And he tried to look at things like, well, there's a tarpon type of fish and there's three bars on them. And what's up with that? Well, they seem to spawn during this certain time of year, and that's three moons, 
after the time that they have as their equinox they're running off of. And that seems real odd. So they know when the salmon are running, all this type of situation is hooked up off these ideas and pictographs and the reason that they have blotches on them. And this guy's again a furniture worker, but he's done this stuff on the side and apparently has real good mind on him. And so he started looking at other things and he made one or two little connections. And then you find out there's lines above this bull's nose that's right here. And what, what could that have to do anything? We don't have the Aldebaran and, and Pleiades connection going on here. We're just looking at blotches that a lot of people have read off long ago. Like they used to have stripes on the horses. It looks like they used to have four stripes. Well, what's that four stripes to do with? Well, that's whenever they're having their kids. That's whenever the baby horses are born. So this designates when they can and can't do things and so on off of it, but it's also showing a year round calendar and an idea and something that it shows. Also in most, if not all this cave art, there's not enough soot on the roof to say that people are living in here doing this and showing it on the wall all the time. This is like a sacred place that they went into like the underworld and they're looking at as above, so below and all these situations talking about it. And you can imagine them sitting in here showing you these ideas, but there's that, that mark that's right there. And what does that have to do with it all? Because there's four on this bull here, and there's four on this one here, and there's four on this one here, and this cave way over here. And I don't know if you want to start taking certain things like saying, well, these same people went from cave to cave to cave drawing pictures for people or something or coming up with that or wait, hold on. These people that we know are not connected all have this thing going on. So apparently even before this, they had a connection splitting up. This knowledge is being carried around somewhere and it shows you that. But there's those four dots over there again, but then there's that bull with Aldebaran in a bullseye in a perfect spot. And then over his shoulder, there's those Pleiades. And we're gonna see that in the symbology that's shown in all cave art here in just a moment too, as we try to get through this a little bit. But so this uh, Ben Bacon, he ended up finding this out and he's taken it to other people and showed it everything. And eventually now we have a paper that comes out of it that's showing you that there are these signs that connect to it that actually date back to 42,000 years before present, over 40,000 BC. And this attaches to a Cro-Magnon type people in the European Upper Paleolithic. Some of these engine, uh, images date to that date all the way down through. In the introduction paper, it starts around 37,000 years ago. People transitioned from making abstract images such as handprints and dots to rectangles and things on cave wall. And the next thing you know, da-da-da-da. But there's other dots with that showing you that when they were, that was going on, they already had a large knowledge base of all of this other stuff going on. So this uh, is one of those things that can really change, if you get to find out about it, of the way that we think about archaic man, or at least these people we're talking about in this situation in comparison, if you will. And so uh, this just came out, and whenever it does, it seems like to not really put the injury on the moment, they're giving you this span from about 20,000 year old cave art all the way up to about that 40,000 year age. We know now Cro-Magnon man at 29,000 BC has the same holotype as people today. So this idea of this rapid change, all these other things are thrown out the window too. And you start adding things up. And when they talk about these people had some knowledge at this time, it really starts to show something. Ice Age hunter gatherers use markings of animal prey to store information about behavior of species crucial to their survival that they would pass it on and on and on. And so here's this bull, four dots, four dot here, four dots there, but there's only three on these horses that are here. This animal has this, these have those and so on. There are markings associated with them either on or beside them and so on. And they're somewhat different. In fact, you look here in the bottom right and the mammoth of the time shows you a heart symbol, which we'll get into here shortly too. But all of these animals seem to have associations with them and they notice something about these scratches that they have next to them sometimes, which just looks like a line. Other times, some are 
you know, definitively longer or shorter, like you see in the bottom right hand corner. And that means something too. Apparently like when it takes an elephant, you have to go through a season set and then it has the baby. And this heart symbol has to do with this concept too. Yeah, it's a heart like we think of. Of course, it doesn't look like the human real heart. So these are symbols that are going back tens of thousands of years and so on. And it's connecting each other with each other and showing you the connections that are here with these animals. And it goes with the times and seasons of when things are happening. And it connects to a calendar that they have that works along with the sun and the moon and things like that. Really, this is more of a, I'm freaking out on it and I need to show it to y'all rather than trying to go into depth and show you every little thing about it. But hopefully this gives enough of an information base to be able to show you that you know, they've come out with these papers and stuff and, and yet it's been peer reviewed. In fact, the people that you thought were peers already got in on this, some of them who were studying this exact same thing and they go, this is it. Uh, we found a thing. It's like a Rosetta Stone and all everything else going on. Here's something that shows you an extreme knowledge and by the way, it's the same everywhere we're looking at to it. So it really validates what we're looking at here. And then we pass it on to other people and they are all in concurrence and we're looking at it. I may go into more depth about this or refer back to it a few times and so on. But there are other markings that they show with things like this horse. Now this horse is a little fat and this horse is a female sewing going on, but what's going on? Well, these scratch markings have to do with something and it actually looks like it may have to do with that Kamyana Mohila linear writing that comes way down through to us later through the Minoans and people that are attached to ancient pre-proto Greece. But in that situation, they find a Y on each one of these and then other pictures show you a baby right next to them or so on. And by figuring out how they put the dots on them and there's four on each one of them and so on, they go, okay, so you know, in general, this is whenever they fold, whenever they have their colts and stuff. And so this Y symbology is a split, uh, one becoming two, so on like that in this concept and idea. And this guy said the meaning of the markings within these drawings have always intrigued him. So he set about trying to de decode them using a similar approach to others took to understand an early Greek uh, form of Greek text. So it's along the lines of what I was talking about. But then what Ben Bacon ended up finding here was something really quite amazing. And, you know, I've tried to put two and two together for you here and stuff, but I found that whenever I was trying to find pictures of him, pictures of this, that, and the other, and then add it to the little article I have there, I said, okay, let me see if there's anything else on about this guy. And lo and behold, here's ancient architects. They already put a thing out about it. And I'm like, what? Oh, they even have the cool thing and this, that, and the other, and da-da-da. And they show these other pictures too that I didn't even have pulled up yet. Well, heck. So y'all need to check out his channel. You really do. The guy's got a, a great demeanor to him and everything. Shows you a lot of knowledge uh, about ancient sites. And uh, where I hooked up onto him is whenever he started showing things about the uh, Gobekli Tepe and Tastapeller sites because he got a hold of the archaeological journals and pictures and so on and just put it together as an information. And I, in wanting to do so, seemed like it was ease it off that. But using this information and imagery of cave art available via the British Library that these people went into, along with these other researchers and the internet, he amassed such a data as possible and began looking for the repeating patterns here. And those repeating patterns, as I stated, did definitely show up all of a sudden. Well, there's only a certain amount here, a certain amount there. And then one of the researchers apparently talked about how the ancient lunar calendar all hooks up to it. And he goes, well, I was going to talk to you about that because there's something about that here too. And there's 13 dots and this, that, and the other. And there's this one place we know they calendar the sun back and forth too. And then that doesn't hook up to it. So they've got like a solar and lunar. And then apparently some other guy came on and he goes, no, it's deeper than that about your solar thing. But let's put all this together. Why are these red blotches under this thing? Is there Has there even ever been a cow or a horse that has this many dots all over his body like that? We look at Holsteins and things like that nowadays, and sure, there's an Appaloosa horse that has stars on his butt, and that was kept and made for a reason. 
that it goes with the stars in the sky, but you can actually see this is a stellar horse here. And then there are markings in that red that go along with it. And I'll be darned, there's those three lines again that go with horses. And this is thousands of miles away in a whole different place, but they've got the reverse hand marks. They've got this, they've got that. And it shows you they definitely got something going on. In fact, oh, wait, they screwed up and they went past the belly on the dots. Somebody went crazy. No, that's the four dots there again. It's like doubled up. I mean, come on. So what is this connection here? Well, this is for the seasons of the year and so on and taught by a bunch of people. And can't you imagine it's amazing sitting in a library, dictating this stuff out and figuring out that you're looking at people from over 20,000 to 40,000 years ago and figuring out what they thought at the time and how it works together. And my preliminary look at this shows that he has this connection due to dating and so on, but he's not making the astro archaeological connection too with Alderbron and things that go along with this. And the fact that people have come out a long time ago and said, if this wall was see-through, you would understand it much more better. But there are a lot of connections that go with this proto writing. It's not just a picture, it's different things. And this other researcher that got involved with it says, the results show that Ice Age hunter-gatherers were the first to use a, some first known right now, use a systematic calendar and marks to record information about major ecological events within that calendar. And so they're really making up a calendar and it goes along with a lot of the things that went with a hunt that people were going along with and whenever they had babies and then when they move, whenever they migrate, whenever they don't and so on like that. And that's what a lot of this knowledge is showing you when other people go, oh, they just saw horses and they tried to finger paint a picture. And it's like, no, there's just a lot more going on than that. And it's taken till about now for somebody could say something that has enough connectives to where they have to go, oh, okay, wow, really, wow. And start to go with the concept and take it to the next level, which I hope starts to happen here pretty soon because it seems like once you open up that Pandora's box about certain things like that, other people that are similar in the field will start to get a hold of it. They'll start noticing other cave things putting together. They'll start putting other things together. They were looking at it from a different point of view and by giving you that puzzle piece that's right there, all of a sudden a lot more comes into view. This lady that's right here, uh, she's a archeologist and uh, her name is Genevieve von Pelsinger. And I did a, a part of her in a video a long time ago. I tried to give almost her presentation and me talking into it, but because it's a TED talk, it got flagged. So I just used a couple of pictures. We're using one of those pictures right here, right now, where it shows you all these symbols that they have. And she says, all these symbols seem to be as a swath across all these people and they're using them in certain ways. And you can see cordiform up there in the center of everything that goes on. There's a heart mark right next to it is the hash mark of the pound sign. Hashtag, there's a cross, there's a capule, there are dots, but in those dots on the left, it shows you that's that Pleiades situation. Right above that's an asterisk or a star, and it has to do with stars, gods, things like that. They have pentaform styles as you come down the left-hand wall here, and it shows a plant growing up or a tree standing there that looks more like an evergreen. There are all kinds of swirls and marks, but even in this elder time, you wouldn't think people had the idea of a square or anything else. No, right in the center of it all is a quadrangle. Although next to it looks like a kidney or a bean or a kidney bean. There are triangles, tactiforms, W signs. Right behind her is that Y sign that's there. And if you watch her presentation, she'll talk about how she set, well, she didn't set, she dug through all these caves, going to these places and taking down all of these pictures of them and cataloging and stuff and started trying to make sense of it all. And people have got a hold of this information and heard things. And next thing you know, people found out something here and how it hooks up with the life cycles of animals and it hooks up to the solar and lunar calendar. And it ends up showing you another bit of knowledge that these people had. And again, we're peering back through a mist of 20 to 40,000 BC. So it's really quite amazing. It's it's something that uh, is exciting enough to have all kinds of TV things about it, specials and so on. 
but I have a feeling that you'll hear very little about it because of who it's attached to and where it comes from. And it changes the idea of what might even be going on, talked about, or anything in pictures like this and so on. Much a different world than what we thought. And these little symbols that are over here next to different cow heads and so on like that, what's this simplistic thing mean? In a time whenever people are going through all of this and animals that we no longer have even on our planet, other ones that have been domesticated and totally changed and you pretty much wouldn't recognize them from their former self not too long ago. Amazing things are afoot at Circle K here showing you these ideas of solar and lunar calendars and their connections. And if you take a couple of my older videos that show you this knowledge that really they aren't talking about at this point and put it together, you get a whole lot more. Ancient Architects got with this guy here. He's been looking at some of his stuff, I guess, and it's old European culture. And he's made a bunch of connections too. And I'd like to mention them in this because it, it, it's, it's just associated, okay? But he says that deification of animal calendar markers, seals from Susa, Iran at 4000 BC, showing goat man holding snakes. Now the snake is a solar symbol and a symbol of hot and dry in that half of the year where one part of the zodiac is in the underworld whereas the other one is out in the open. And this ends when Ibex goats, Ibex goats start mating, announcing the arrival of the rains in the cool wet half of the year. And it's on the flip side of these symbols here so it makes the connection that they're talking about here and then here and so on too. Sure, it looks kind of odd to you and everything, but this is around in the Calcolithic age, if you will. Mesopotamian god Utu or Shamash, that sun god, was depicted as a golden bull, the sun in Taurus, with flowing lapis lazuli beard or flowing water. Cause of the flood arrives there in Taurus the local flood of their area that happens out. But then again, what happened in an ancient time and a local flood is a totally different video series on how the idea of Noah and the flood came out of just something that happened local at the Tigris and Euphrates, which was devastating enough to be recorded, but not in the way that we currently have it now. It's amazing how we've been able to find out all these things, but here's the month of the flood of the Euphrates and Tigris and the way it comes at the same time here and that goes at the same time and the same time and it's showing you astro theology again which I've shown over and over but what's odd is it's so woven into all these myths and things that go on by the time that we even first record it it shows you that this was going on long before and didn't show up like popcorn like I refer to in a lot of my videos and in fact we're now taking something that was going on in a 2450 BC and da da da. Well, no, that was going on at 5200 BC or almost 4,000 years ago. Oh, wait, hold on a minute. Here's Gobekli Tepe. It's going on at uh, 10,000 years ago on the end of the last ice age. Oh my gosh. Well, wait, you know, all these cave paintings here, this stuff was going on 10,000 years before that. 10,000 years. That's amazing. Well, 10,000 you know, 20 to 40,000 is the spread of another 20,000 years that was already going on in ancient times. Not to sound weird, but there are people to this day that don't have connections like this that go on in anything really. And with the stars and seasons, there are people that are still hunter-gatherers and not even in a seasonal manner like these people were for tens of thousands of years before if you believe the current narrative, when it actually did happen. So it's incredibly amazing to look at this and to see this one aspect that people were really unsure of and all of a sudden pull off into something. Another narrative scene that's been shown in one of the cattle Hoyuk sites here is a bull coming after a guy and then two uh, jaguars, which is a symbol of rain, and believe it or not, it hooks up to ancient Mayas and things like that too. And their beliefs go along with this somewhat and shows you there could be connected. But the furious bull of dry, hot summer has stopped, Taurus, and then the sun's head has died down. The leopards of the rain season are mating. The leopard rain goddess arrived and is spreading his holy semen on the land and rejoice. So, you know, it's weird. You can get these couple little pictures here and people are like, what the hell's going on here? 
And once you're able to hook up these beliefs and people know about them from times before and after and everything and go, well, this, this apparently has this connective of the seasons. Who knows if there's a slit in this wall over here that lets the sun in and it starts off over here and it goes over there during this time. Here's something that that guy that we're showing right now has ended up figuring out. And uh, he calls it one of his favorite objects here. It's actually a silver ca uh, gilt cast shaft hole axe head made between 2500 and 1500 BC and along the Oxus and Maragrub rivers in modern what we call today Uzbekistan or Tajikistan or Afghanistan in that area. It's one of his favorite objects. Why? Because it made him realize what double-headed eagle means and its connections to astrotheology and all the things that go on here. And if you look, the sword that is there, there's a panther type creature and so on going on, but it has wings on it. There's also the winged double eagle and things go on and just parts of it are gilded and parts of it are not. And during this time, silver was more valuable than gold, if you will. And in there, and there's this man with a double-headed eagle. That's pretty incredible. But uh, that axe head is currently kept in the Metropolitan Museum. The description reads, the shaft hole axe with bird-headed demon, boar, and dragon. The accompanying short article points that uh, Western Iran is the possible origin of mythological scene depicted. And I've shown you where in this area that we're talking about how griffins came about. The idea of dragons has been really drugged right through here quite a few times. I felt like, just like showing you too much cave art at once and I backed off of it. Showing you too many things that are connection for dragons that people started going, well, everything about dragons? No, but it's amazing how much has connections to it. And I tried to show that even recently in a Christmas dragon. So it's quite odd and connections that go in there. But what comes before that and everything? Well, at one time, these people were witnessing all kinds of creatures aren't on the planet anymore either too. So at one point you have to start getting a mythology that comes out of something that no longer exists and pull it off of that. But here, when we look at things like this and there's just three marks on this and there's three marks on that and three marks on there, what are the connections here going on? And amazingly, just a side researcher was able to figure out um, I think I've got this connected out. Whenever he showed it to a group of people who knew what the hell was going on and researched things like this, they go, I think you've got it, man. Let's start applying it a little bit. Let's involve this guy and this guy because they've been doing this for years now and are, are going to be amazed to see what you're showing them right here. They pulled those people in on it. Next thing you know, a paper is being read about it and everything and something again that changes our whole idea of the way everything worked out is starting to show itself more evident. Because at one time when people looked at these cards, they were like, oh, so they were ugh, and somebody was finger painting, all the way to the point that Renaissance painters were going, no, man, these people had it going on. All the way to archeoastronomy people turning around and going, there's Aldebaran, here's this, there's the Pleiades, all the way to the point of now somebody saying, you know, all these little marks on here too, they have to do with when the animals breed and so on, and it goes with a calendar and everything so they know what is going on and migrations and everything. Pretty interesting, huh? Let me know what you think down below. As this correlates and coagulates into something else, we're gonna end up showing you again in the future, but you can refer back to this at the point that, yeah, these people had it all together. You know what else they found out since between then and now? And I'll make another vid. Let me know what you think below. Peace.